Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 1566, written by Thrax Emmer, The Mysterious Journey of the Wandering Cards. I like playing cards and tarot cards, I just happen upon them individually. I'll walk down the street and bam, I'll spot a card. I've not lived in areas that have a heavy gambling presence either. I started holding onto them a few years back and now I have over two decks worth of cards. Somewhat more strange, understand that I don't talk much about religion or whatnot. I believe such things should be private, as much as possible. That speaking definitively about what is or supposed to be ineffable is foolish to the highest order. My wife is non-religious, we have a son. Out of nowhere, when our son was two, he started talking in very specific articulate terms about his previous life, how he died as an old man, the hat he wore, how he felt about the life he lived. He mentioned that he was happy to be with us and that he felt very lucky. My wife and I were floored. We tried to talk to him more about it, ask him questions, but he couldn't remember. His speech became far more appropriate, less articulate, less focused on abstracts, etc. Within a week, he couldn't even remember telling us what he had initially said. Also, this was during a time when we didn't have TV, so no TV shows to influence this young mind. Stranger still, my paternal grandma was in her 90s. She was doing less well and was, unfortunately, living in a nursing home. It was a nice facility, at least. I was working crunch hours all the time, and I hadn't had an opportunity to visit for months. I had a dream where I was in a luminous silver fog. I was a point of light in this fog. I saw my grandma, who was also a point of light in the fog. We talked to each other, said our I love yous, and said goodbye. Then, a fantastically bright light shot up between us like a comet. My grandmother said, Oh, there goes Fred Rogers. He was such a nice man. I woke up suddenly. On the way to work, I heard on the radio that Mr. Rogers, Mr. Fred Rogers, had just died. Two weeks later, my grandma passed away. I have more stories, as I'm sure we all do. Life is weird, and I love it. Case Answer File 1566, The Mysterious Journey of the Wandering Cards People can have specific attunement to various different kinds of objects. For you as cards, for me it's coins. I tend to find them all over the place, just walking around outside. In the dirt, on the pavement, it's weird. <laughs> I guess it's not that inexplicable. People, especially these days, tend to not really care about change, but still, it's something that occurs to me. Do you have anything that you're kind of attuned to that you always seem to find in weird spots? But I do agree that it is foolish, foolish is maybe a strong word, but I guess it applies, to be certain of the reality of the universe. There's so many variables and so many possibilities. What can apply to one theory can apply to another. So are you absolutely certain of what you think is true for the nature of the universe? I'm not. There's so many possibilities. Of course, I gravitate to more towards the simulation theory, but even that is just a stopgap because then you go to the real universe and then is that a real universe or another simulation? Or is there a god in that universe, a creator? Or is there no creator? And this is all sort of like a repeating cycle, the big crunch, where the universe expands and contracts, expands and contracts again and again for infinity. I don't know. There's things I prefer. I just, I don't know. With all those variables, I think it's fair to just say, I'm not sure. <laughs> but there are theories I gravitate more towards. I think that's a fair statement. Your child having almost like a save file from their past life embedded in their soul, isn't that interesting? It really is like loading into a new game. You beat a game in the first run, now you're loading into a second run. <laughs> How cool is that? That's so cool. And of course, that does tend more towards simulation theory, but who knows? Maybe, maybe there's a creator that is just pushing us back into a new life. Maybe we have a choice in that and we just don't remember. Case file number 1567, written by, it goes the other way too, a chance encounter with a pink sock. Okay, in 2009, I performed a show on a boat at the Edinburgh Festival. It was a pretty stressful show. The cast were there for 10 days, performing five shows a day, back to back shuffling back and forth between the boat and our flat with a change of clothes each day so that we could go out straight after the last show. Anyway, one day we're walking from the boat to the flat and I see a pink sock on the pavement. I pick it up, it's pink with a white cupcake on it. It has to be mine. I have this exact same pair of socks with me in Edinburgh. 
I must have dropped it as it's so close to the boat. The rest of the gas is all grossed out that I'm touching this sock and considering taking it back to the flat, but I'm totally convinced it must be mine. Get back to the flat, and it wasn't. It kind of blew my mind that someone in a small vicinity had the same distinctive socks as me and proceeded to lose one on my path home. Who loses a sock? So I kept the extra sock. Now I have three. Case file number 1567. A chance encounter with a pink sock. So the you in a different universe lost her sock. Is my guess, it's the simplest explanation. In that universe, she's walking around, suddenly gets back to the flat and realizes she's missing a sock and it's on the pavement in a different universe. <laughs> or it could be an extreme coincidence, for sure. If it was a normal girl just wearing the same kind of sock that you have and then suddenly somehow lost it on the pavement there, hmm, maybe it got wet, maybe it was raining and she took it off there and didn't want it. There's a striking similarity in preferences there. So I think if you found this girl, you'd get along quite well. So be on the lookout for your sock twin. Bonus file, written by Acrobatic Archer 805 The Snowstorm Spectre Maybe about 10 years ago, I was working as a manager at a smallish restaurant chain. I'd been with the company for a while, but was fairly new at this location. It was in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, USA, which probably doesn't mean anything to most people. But the two jobs I'd had prior in that town are a little locally famous for being haunted. I've had my share of ghost sightings and weird stuff. This was different. The building here was three floors. Bottom was an antique store and half of the restaurant, then the second floor was all the restaurant. On the third floor was an abandoned ballroom with all glass walls that likely once overlooked a lake behind the property, but a hotel had been built since and blocked the view. Super creepy space, but nobody ever went up there. Might be irrelevant, but that's the property. We had a pretty bad snowstorm this particular day. I'd been shoveling and salting the walkways and went in to start my shift. I'm walking from the kitchen on the second floor and down a couple steps to the dining room area and something hit me. I squeezed my eyes shut, brought my hands up to my face and fell back a little and yelled out, Come on guys! At that moment I thought someone had taken a bucket of rock salt and threw it at me. It felt like thousands of little pieces of something hard pelted me on my whole body. I was half expecting it to be a prank, but I opened my eyes after a bit and it was like pulling my shirt to check for salt or something all in my bra, because I felt it literally everywhere. Here's the thing, nothing was there. Once I realized I was fine and not covered in a pile of salt or rocks or whatever, I looked around. And two of the waitresses were just staring at me, like stop setting tables wide-eyed, because their perspective was that I just stopped, put my hands up to my face to shield it, fell back, yelled out, come on guys, and then started pulling my shirt like I was trying to shake something out of it. They saw me react, but nothing that would cause a reaction. I'm not sure exactly what that was or what it could have been. Case notes for the bonus file. The Snowstorm Spectre. So even if spirits can manifest real matter, in this case that's not the full story because your coworker saw you and you saw yourself and after examination there was nothing there. So even if a spirit somehow manifested rock salt on you, did it then demanifest it? De-render it from the universe? Can a spirit do that? That would be next level, for sure. Maybe a creation of your own mind induced by a spirit. So it wasn't real, but it was all happening in your head. Of course, that can make it seem very real. But regardless, it must have looked absolutely hilarious from your coworkers' perspectives. It's like, Wah! at least you didn't go full Alex Jones ripping your shirt off. <laughs> oh my. Now time for the quote of the day. The best years of your life are the ones in which you decide your problems are your own. You don't blame them on your mother, the ecology, or the president. You realize that you control your own destiny. Albert Ellis. By and large true. There are exceptions, of course. You don't control where you're born or if you get an incurable genetic disease or something like that. But I think as a general statement, it applies. And especially the longer out in the time frame you go, the less luck matters and the more your own choices and skill matter. You see this on YouTube. It's the same thing where a single video doesn't really matter and it's mostly luck if it goes really high or not. To an extent, if you're producing something to the quality of Kurtzkizyat, the channel that makes these animations of really interesting theories and stuff, they're so good that there's no chance they wouldn't succeed, in my view. But if you're just really good, then it, there's a certain element of luck to it. But if you stretch it out over years and years or decades, then luck is much less relevant. 
If you're extremely unlucky, maybe then you still won't make it in any field. It doesn't have to be YouTube. It applies in general. We make our own luck in the long term. But there's plenty of short-term fluctuation and chaos. You have to learn to live with that and even enjoy it. Because it does make life interesting. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony signing off.